Pat, what's going hey guys, on? Hey Bob, welcome. Welcome guys to uh, this week's Friday Coffee Break. Bob almost missed his chair sitting down there. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, a lot, of, a lot of great questions, a lot of great comments, um, a lot of stuff going on right now. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but part of uh, part of our billion government's oh, um, bailout plan may actually help in what we do here in our short sale world. They're starting to give money, or they have some money that's allocated to incent banks to move quicker on short sales and incent homeowners to participate in them, providing money back from the government, which would go from the bank to the homeowner at closing to the tune of $1,500 for short sale. Yeah, where our homeowner can actually get money back. I'll talk more about that on next week's Friday Coffee Break or maybe on our, my blog in between. There's something that's pretty important and we don't have time to go through it because I want to get to your questions. But that's something to be aware of. There's some money out there that's going to help us in what we're doing here. All right, so let's, uh, let's get right into our question. You see, I'm on this funny little thing. I don't know if you guys have seen these netbooks. Great for online communication. They suck in the sun. I'll tell you that right now because I can barely you read You see the glare right in your, right your head, Oh, too. yeah, and you can't, you can't even read uh, the damn uh, screen. You get what you pay for, right? All right, hey, Pat, I thought you might be interested to hear. And we just got a call from our escrow officer informing us that they are no longer allowed to do double closings per Chicago title, shutting it down. As many of you know, Chicago is one of the largest nationwide title companies. We're doing simultaneous closing. We were doing simultaneous closings, and now we can't even do a double close, difference being a dry closing versus a wet closing, a funded closing, which is transactional funding. Remember, we've been talking about this, guys and gals. Um, our escrow officer was in tears, and she usually doesn't show any emotions. They will honor anything we close up to the end of the month. Then um, after that, hasta la vista, or uh, c'est la vie. There we go. Um, hang on, i got to scroll down on the screen. I can't see. Anyway, um, I, I would be devastated right now, but thanks to you and your crystal ball, I'm hardly phased. We've already put in uh, play what we had to do uh, to create a path of making money in short sales via many other ways. Uh, we may need to do a couple one-on-one -on -one calls with you, but uh, are good to go. Just thought I'd give you a, a heads up and thanks for everything. Uh, guys and guys, you can fight this. You can fight the change. But please listen to what I'm saying. The simultaneous close as we know it is, is gone. Wrong that wasn't annoying. The double close is nothing more than a glorified simultaneous close. Never been more than that. And it's going to fall by the wayside quick. Start preparing yourself with alternative ways of financing. Um, there's a lot of them out there. You're going to have to start looking at them. You're going to continue to do business. Okay? Uh, thanks for everything. Well, you're welcome. I don't even know who that was. That was Justin. That was Justin. Thanks, Justin, for that, for that comment. Um, what is the fastest way to cross-reference names and address to get phone contact numbers from Charles? Charles, we use a number of different skip trace companies, skip trace services, really what they are, they're just massive access to databases where they can put in a certain amount of information and find people. 411.com is a cheap, easy way um, to find a lot of the information right from your own little computer. But play around, it's not that hard to do. Um, there's free services and there's some that you pay for that are more effective. Um, Pat, that's, and that was from Charles, this is from Anthony. Pat, what other states need a license for loss mitigation? I'll be honest with you, Anthony, I don't know them all right now. They're changing so fast. I hope this means the bank will be forced to pay our fee in the future. Um, no, they won't. They aren't now and they will never be able to for be forced to pay our fee. The cool thing about licensing as we have it here in the state of Connecticut is now, you know what? We can run in our marketing or advertising that we're licensed through the bank, um, through the Department of Bank in the state of Connecticut, which effectively means they endorse what we do. So provided we do business the way they tell us to do business, um, we're good. Okay? So the licensing is not that bad a thing. Uh, next one's from Bridge. Pat, the 30-day no transfer rule from Bank of America, uh, item number 10 on our acceptance letter, has been a hot topic for a while. My last two Bank of America deals about two months ago, I was able to get that removed. Are you experiencing the same, or do you see Bank of America getting firm in their no transfer rule requirement? Rich, um, we've had the same experience with Countrywide and Bank of America. Every single time that's come up, we send them a denial letter from our title company saying they can't title it with that and report, uh, um, demand that it be fully removed with no exceptions, and they comply. They don't even question it. So we've had the same experiences, and I don't see them getting any harder with it. Uh, hey, Pat, it seems more and more lenders are taking the attitude of my way or the highway on short sale negotiations. I've had a, quite a few that won't allow any seller concessions for closing costs, and many of these buyers have FHA loans that require credit back to buyer. 
Uh, what are you seeing out there and what can be done in these situations? Thank you. This is from Susan. Uh, we're not seeing that, Susan. I'm seeing it with seconds, okay? Mr. Uh, second. Morning. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good thanks. See, with seconds, it's getting more difficult because um, a lot of stuff is getting set, sold off really quickly to debt collection companies who are being serviced by then. So, yeah, they're, they're getting a little tough. But for first position, if anything, I'm finding them to be more accommodating in their negotiations but more strict in their process, meaning that the short sale package has got to be perfect, not too much, not too little. Give them exactly what they want. Don't leave anything out. If something's missing, make sure it's accounted for. Totally pro. And I've been preaching this from day one. Uh, for those of you who are, who are members of our short sale flagship system, you know what I'm talking about, okay? These guys are getting hundreds of applications every single day. You have to separate yourself some way. One of the ways of doing it is making their life easy. Come in pro, make your stuff look clean, crisp, easy for them to process. If they got to pick up a phone or an email to ask for something else, you made their job harder, okay? Ooh, my screen just disappeared, and it's back. Hi, Bob. I would like to know if you have a list of lenders that would loan, um, that would loan with my end buyers on a short sale transaction or foreclosure being that title is not seasoned. Most cases, end lenders need 90 to 180 days of seasoning, and I disagree with that. Question number two, do you have a consulting company that would handle my short sale negotiations? Um, listen, they don't need, the only one that needs 90 days is FHA. All right, there's no, um, there's, there's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac do not need, they don't have a seasoning requirement other than this very simple stipulation that the seller of public record matches up with the seller on the contract. That's it. And you have to get that to work out, and that's the timing of the deal, okay? Um, but no, when you run into seasoning issues, it's because the, the direct lender who's originating that loan and selling it off to Fannie or Freddie, being a conventional product, is adding extra stipulations to it. And there's many, many lenders out there who don't add all these extra guidelines. But no, they're not requiring 90 to 180 days. That's not norm. Um, so you gotta you gotta look around a little more, okay? And as far as handling your transactions, um, we don't outsource our loss mitigation company to the general public. If it's something you're um, you think you want to be serious about, you can talk to Bob uh, at bob at boblachance.com, and you can just deal with it one on one, okay? But it's not like out there for sale. Um, you can deal with it one on one on there, okay? Bob at boblachance.com. I think. I may have just wasted the screen there. Hang on. Um, one last. Oh, I got one last here. Okay. Um, Tracy, a negotiator from City Mortgage, says that Freddie Mac will only pay 5% commission, not 6%. If one agent lists and sells a house, I'm the listing and selling agent. The package is approved except for the commission. She called the seller, blah, 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 blah. Is there anywhere in writing that I can force Freddie Mac to pay 6%? no matter who sells the property. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, okay? You're lucky to be getting 5%. Most lenders right now, if you're the listing agent and the selling agent, will chop the commission in half to down to 25 or 3%. For them to give you 5%, that's very, very um, uh, giving of them. So, Tracy, be happy with that. There's nothing to force them to pay any commission. It's a short sale. They don't have to do anything. They set the rules, okay? Hey, guys, we've got to wrap it up with that. Uh, and I'm sorry I can't get to the last few questions here. For those who are not on our calls, okay, managemyshortsale.com. We have a big announcement coming up, which is going to really add a whole lot more value to that entire program. If you haven't checked it out, 30 days for free. doesn't cost you a penny. Managemyshortsale.com. This is Bob and Pat checking out. You guys have a great week. Peace.